You're watching Extraordinariness with Brittany L, where ordinary people do extraordinary things. Today I'm at the Klein Sun Gallery in New York, New York with Lee Hong Vo and his interpreter Willem Molesworth and we're going to look at his piece, Tools of Study. So thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. And I'm super excited to see what's going to be obviously so brilliantly displayed throughout. It's quite bright and welcoming so I'm excited to see what's here. I'd love to hear some more about the process of how these sculptures come about. and how he got into all of this. What he first does is he creates um, and stacks sheets of paper to create a large enough block. Mm -hmm. Once he has a large enough block of paper, um, he's able to go in and sculpt what he's, what he's thought about creating. Have you always worked with paper? As far as your business or profession, what were you doing before you were sculpting? Uh, yeah, before he was a publisher of advertising, mm. so he became very familiar with paper. So choosing what paper to use and things like this is something that he's, uh, he's very comfortable with doing and it becomes very natural to him just because he has all this experience in working with all different media of paper. Did you sculpt as a child or? At any time when you were younger? When he was a child, he would, uh, as opposed to sculpting, he would just draw. Okay. Just sketch things. What made you leave publishing to start sculpting? Uh, he always felt like he wanted to do art. There was no reason for it. It's just something he wanted to do. Whereas um, publishing uh, was a means of getting by. It was a means of like living. Paying the bills. Paying the bills. Right. Exactly. So pay the bills to... To study. Oh. He was working at the publishers. What he was doing was not uh, like trying to start a career. He knew he always wanted to do art, but it was a means to an end. Mm -hmm. That, that job in order to pay for his studies and in order to better understand what type of art he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. What inspires each piece? A lot of them were Grecian. So what brought the inspiration for them? Uh, <laughs> Um, he was saying as a child, what he would, these were all his uh, tools of study. You know, these were things he would study uh, to sculpt. You, know, you can't have a person sit around all day and uh, wait for you to draw them. Mm -hmm. What you could have is you could take these various sculptures um, and draw them. They, they became his uh, tools on which he learned the very foundation. The foundation of mm -hmm. the of art. Um, so he's uh, now, because they've always been with him his entire life, he thinks of them constantly when he's creating art. Um, so he's finally recreated them using his own uh, special technique. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that was my next question, where did the name Tools of Study come from? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you for answering that. <laughs> what is the average process? How long does it take to complete one of these? From start to making the paper, or creating the actual paper blocks, to sculpting it. Um, to create a work like this big, it typically takes 30 days. 30 days? How long would it have taken for David? About 40 days. 40 days. That's quick. <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to take a really long time. But, but for all of these works, it mm -hmm. took two years. Two, two years. years. So this has been over the past two years, specifically 2012 and 2013? So it started in 2011. Okay, and then completion by 2013. So are there any new pieces that he's working on or planning on debuting? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, he's always creating new ones. Any new mediums? Any new materials? Yeah, there's all types of different mediums and styles and uh, ways he has uh, chosen to express himself. Mm. And how has your first solo show been? The first time I've been in the first time. The first time I've been in the first time. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Good, exciting. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I would be very overwhelmed because it's just, I initially thought they're very delicate uh -huh. and they're very, actually very solid. So, you know, I'd be nervous if people were near them, but that's good. Good to be level-headed. Yeah. It's better than me. <laughs> With them being very stable, what was the most difficult piece to create? I know he said there needs to be a center you have to pay attention to. So I would think it was a heavier sculpture, but what was the most difficult for him? The bust of Versailles. The bust of Versailles? And that because of the beard and the hair? Yeah. Mm. Uh, because the, the, the various changes throughout his um, body, like his beard coming out and his hair flowing everywhere, like, the most difficult to sculpt, just because was, it was so variable, the piece was everywhere. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to do, I would love to get a demonstration and he could help me lifting or showing how we are going to maneuver David. Can we do that? Okay. Yeah. Ready? Okay. I don't want to. Do I? Do I need the gloves? Or I'm good? Or? Uh, he says you don't need them. Okay. Is this really? That is really heavy. Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh! How do you hold that? I would crumble under the weight. Yeah. I'm just going to touch up here. He's got a big head. <laughs> I can say that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and you're very strong. Indeed, indeed, indeed. How many sheets would be in this, David? Uh, There's a certain amount per block. Mm -hmm. So we see how many blocks. Uh, he's saying about um, 8,000 sheets of paper. Um, wow. 8,000 sheets. That's a lot of paper. That's a lot of reams. If you had them in an office. Wow. He's saying it's not just because he's, he, he's the one creating these sculptures that makes paper so uh, variable. Paper has always been, been able to be used like this. Mm -hmm. So there, there are people working with paper right now who are also doing incredible things. Wow, you're very humble. I appreciate that. And if you had to say anything to inspire someone who is maybe watching this in the future, what would you say to give them inspiration to follow their dream, to do whatever it is the art that is that they that is their passion? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying uh, everybody has, whether or not it's art or anything, everybody has their own dream and, and we, all can, we all can achieve it. Well, thank you, first of all, for allowing me to come and touch these beautiful sculptures. How do I say thank you to him? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are absolutely beautiful and honestly the definition of extraordinary to take a medium such as paper and where most will paint or draw to turn it into a life-like 3D version of something we classically see. So thank you for being an extraordinary person and creating something so wonderful. The Klein Sun Gallery is located in New York, New York at 525 West 22nd Street, zip code 10011. Speaking of fashion, I had so much fun on the day that I spent with Brian Robinson of BDR Styling. This celebrity stylist from Baltimore, Maryland has worked with clients up and down the East Coast, including Erica Mena from Love & Hip Hop New York.
We're here today with Brian Robinson of BDR Styling. I'm so excited. I have been styled by him today. I feel absolutely fabulous. And we, today we get to do a follow-up with him. We do. And I'm excited because some <laughs> things have changed since the last time we spoke. Yes. And what are those true. things that have changed, sir? Well, I'm still styling. BDR Styling is a fashion and wardrobe styling company. Um, pretty much where we left off, it was kind of in still its beginning phase. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since July 12th of 2012. We started our interview in February of 2013. Right. Um, since then, actually within that month, I was actually introduced to Erica Man of Love Hip Hop New York. Okay. I, actually I remember a little bit of that coming out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was pretty cool. I actually began the process of styling her. First project was for her book cover mm -hmm. um, underneath it all. Oh, I like that. That dress? Yeah. It, ooh, that was a good one. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really a great option. I think that it's always good to listen to the cues of exactly where a client is looking to go. Mm -hmm. Even if it's taking them out of their realm mm -hmm. because you want to be able to provide that element of surprise mm -hmm. and it being her first book no one was really expecting that mm -hmm. um but besides that it's been about building my portfolio definitely working with her continuously mm -hmm. after the book i was actually brought on as her stylist for love and hip-hop new york bravo yeah. yes <laughs> Yeah, Round really of applause, cool. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool. I mean, it gave me the ability to really travel more and definitely have the capabilities of networking mm -hmm. to so many different levels, building so many relationships, and just really being able to perfect my craft. Mm -hmm. I think Erica is a really good individual to really work with mm -hmm. because a canvas um, is one that the entire world will see, and she takes direction really well. And, she, so. and I've seen her in a couple different things where it's been something that I necessarily would have never even thought that she would wear, but she looks phenomenal. Absolutely. And it's like a different look or a different kind of accent here or there that she has. And I'm like, oh, it just turned it just perfectly a little bit one way or the other, so. Yeah, of course. You, yeah. You know, um, with Erica, it's one of those things where, you know, we have a great relationship. So it was kind of one of those things where it was kind of a tug of war at first. She has her initial style and mm -hmm. I have certain envisionments of where I want to take her. Mm -hmm. So it's all about really just having her let her guard down a little bit and really let me take full control of mm -hmm. styling, which is been really cool. You know, she's definitely in her own now. Mm -hmm. um, I've always gotten the accolade that a lot of individuals see a difference in her overall sense of style now. Mm -hmm. and just Kudos her, to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and her overall being. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's what BDR styling is. With BDR styling, it's always been about three essential components, which is envision, create, and transform. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always stick to. You know, I've always had this envisionment of exactly where I wanted to take my clients. Mm -hmm. After really hone in exactly where I want to take them, create that look, and then after that, they're absolutely going to be transformed into what I feel as if is the ideal look for their image. Yeah, I didn't think as even we put this exactly. together today, this is not something that I would typically wear. I would, yeah. I see, wouldn't necessarily, see look, he's working. <laughs> like, he's got me all together. I would never necessarily think, first of all, even I went in a store and saw all of these different pieces separately. Yes. I might be like, oh, that's cute, or oh, that's nice, but I would never see it put together and then think, that's what I'm going to wear today. Exactly. So you do have an eye. You really have a gift that yeah. is like, I can grab it and make it happen. Yeah, and the funny thing is, with this top that you actually have on, this crop, um, and it actually has a little bit of polyester and a little bit of cotton mm -hmm. and a little bit of nylon, but as far as the the textile and the actual pattern. If you put it against the different color pants, for instance, when I put it against the bronze pants, it mm -hmm. actually brought out an undertone that was inside of the shirt right. and made it pop. Right. For instance, if you was to wear this top with more of the light turquoise, it would bring that color out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, all depending on exactly what you incorporate with an outfit, it can really change the shade of that overall one song. And, and one of the things that, you know, you're able to do when you can pick that one piece or this or that because I know that I could easily wear this shirt with something else or wear these pants with something else but you know when you transition and you're working with somebody who is on television or this and they want to uh, give a certain appeal I like that you're able to push a boundary that you may not have necessarily stepped into originally because I'm 
like, well, do I love dresses. I'm usually the dress girl. So having on pants and like, they're kind of like a little short and having heels on, I'm like, I still feel like myself. But you gave me a new avenue to kind of, you know, work with it. And like you said, Erica, she's kind of in a place now where I do see things that she wears. She does look very different. And it, it is very, like, I love the book cover. Like, I remember, I think it was a purple dress. Was, was that it, one? It was, was the it, black and white. It was black? Okay. It was the black and white. You remember all of the images, though, because it was constant, 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 just behind the scenes pick. Mm -hmm. And her second book is actually about to come out, which had a lot of different outfits. So, mm -hmm. there's tons of video styling throughout the book. Oh. So, it's going to be really cool. Um, published and whatnot. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now that you sit here, and I mean, we're what? eight months ago yeah eight. we were having a conversation about so these are things coming up these are things I'm gonna be doing and now to actually be doing it how does it feel like how do you you know look back at the footage and then you remember we were sitting on the steps of your childhood yes. home <laughs> reminiscing about who you were and that moment of inspiration and when you felt free and the, the pole wasn't there anymore but that hole was exactly. still there yes and yeah, so reminiscence of my childhood. Right. So how does it feel now looking at where you are? And it's scary. Really? It is. I mean, it's a good scary. Mm -hmm. And you know, it goes back to that quote that if your dreams aren't big enough and you know, if they don't scare you, then obviously you're not thinking large enough. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what I'm doing to a lot of people may seem so simplistic that are not into fashion, but people want to be able to get their creative drive and their passion out there and really be able to infuse that on a public figure mm -hmm. or someone that they feel as if is going to really be able to get across that look that they have in their mind that they want to be able to provide. So it's been a scary roller coaster, mm -hmm. but at the same time frame, I've accepted it because this is what I asked for. Mm -hmm. And you know, be careful day, what you ask for because you just might get, get it. it. Absolutely. And you know, it's, it's a blessing. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, I just look at it as I initially didn't go to school for fashion merchandising. You mm -hmm. know, I initially did in the later years, but my passion to begin with was um, mass communication with integrated media to be mm -hmm. a television host. Okay. So, oh, you trying to take my job? <laughs> I see on. what I see what it is now. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna slide on in. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Oh no. But you found your no, you found your gift. Like, there's a um, quote that I um, put out that was just, you know, you can be taught skills. Yes but you can't be taught gifts. Absolutely. And when you engage your gifts, that's where you can learn skills that will enhance it. Exactly. So a lot of people will engage so much time into, I gotta get this degree or this certification or this, because they think that that's gonna make whatever it is that they want. But your unique gift is that twang you put to it that spins it and then makes it like this, that makes it what Erica looks like, that makes it like what you have on right now because I want this <laughs> shirt myself. <laughs> but that's, that's definitely what it is. You use your gifts and you definitely have. I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad I've been a part of this journey with yeah. you. Because it's just like, <laughs> I told you it's true. Put it in the universe, believe it, and say it, and it'll happen. That is absolutely true. And you're a living example of that right now. Yeah, and I appreciate all of the accomplishments and all of the opportunities that have come my way. And I think with me, I don't allow myself to really soak it all in because I'm always thinking about what's next. Mm -hmm. You know, the next big picture, the next big project, the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I think that working with Erica has been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience because it's allowed me to showcase my work nationally mm -hmm. and open that door for so many more people to see exactly what BDR styling is. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more than just me. You know, it's a company, it's a brand, mm -hmm. it's a way of life. And I really wanted to take it all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. And you went me, on your way, yeah. You know, it's like I just completely, my key to success, I really feel like is just do you. Don't worry about what the Method. next stylist is doing. Don't okay. try to mimic certain things. Just really go for what you feel is it's your passion, your heart and soul, and infuse that. And the way I infuse it is through garments, you know. Doctors do it through, you know, schooling to actually treat patients, lawyers, when cases, you want to be at the top of your game. For right. me, it's about making sure that I can solidify a look and making sure that I can stamp it and get nothing but accolades that someone actually looks phenomenal and something that I've put together. I have to say that I am extremely proud of you. I am overjoyed that I was able to be a part of this journey with you. I'm excited for the next steps that are coming. I'm excited for premieres of shows and all the wonderful things that are going to be coming up. And because you are clearly an example of 
when you put something into the universe, when you speak it into existence, it can happen. Absolutely. What's some advice that you would give or that you would leave with our audience that's watching? Um, I think for anyone that's trying to enter the world of styling or are interested in fashion in general, just follow your passion. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, for instance, it wasn't my first choice as far as career, but it was something that I was actually drunk into, um, drank into, um, just from my love of garments and just with individuals just asking me, okay, let's put this together, how can I do this? And, you know, being on um, production sets and mm -hmm. just seeing how people really piece it together, it really provided me with the passion and really want to do it as a career. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that is going to be coming really quick is I am going to be going ahead and doing workshops, BDR styling oh, workshops, okay. where it will be completely blasted through social media, where you can sign up um, and actually get a crash course on exactly the fundamentals that are needed in order to actually be a successful fashion stylist within the industry. That's awesome. And that's wonderful then you can give back and teach and tell others. It's nothing to have a gift and not share it and not tell others how they can become better within themselves. So I commend you. Oh, Bravo. You. You, you. you are definitely an awesome person. Thank you. And thank you for joining me again. You're more than welcome. In this beautiful background, this beautiful space that we're in. Yes. I mean, it's the absolutely Oreo awesome. Stadium. It's a sentimental feeling, it right? Is. <laughs> Baltimore, you know. Exactly, exactly. It's home. Exactly. And Love thank it. you all for watching and stay tuned for more to come up. We will see you later. Bye. One of the people that I was honored to meet was Shay Sharp, who is the president and founder of Shay Sharp's Pink Wishes. This breast cancer organization grants wishes to women who are diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. At the age of 26, Shay was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. She took her pain, turned it into her passion, so that she could change others and motivate their lives. Let's see a clip. This is Extraordinariness with Brittany L, and I am here with the lovely Shay Sharp of Shay Sharp's Pink Wishes, and we are talking about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And the lovely lady to my right is going to share with us what makes her so extraordinary. On another episode this season, I met a very special little girl by the name of Zora Ball and her parents, Curtis and Jackie Ball. At seven years old, Zora is the youngest person to create and code a video game. This little girl from West Philadelphia not only has an acuity for technology, but also a passion for fashion. Some pretty impressive things on the computer recently. I heard that you actually created a video game. What's your video game called? Vampire Diamond. Watching Extraordinariness with Brittany L, where ordinary people do extraordinary things. And I'm here today with Celine Weldon, who is the co-owner of Whimsical. Whimsical is probably something that doesn't really sound like popsicles, but it is. someone you know is an extraordinary person and you'd like to be featured as a guest on Extraordinariness with Brittany L, send me your information at yourlifewbe at gmail.com and visit xobeonline.com. Bye. Real. No, don't do that. Good. I can pull it when I need to sometimes. Oh, are we really rolling? This celebrity stylist from Baltimore, Maryland has worked with clients up and down the East Coast. The East Coast. <laughs> Big shot. That just was like so good. And then mm -hmm. I feel like this looks good. Like it sounds good. It does? Okay. If you or someone you know is an extraordinary person and would like your... What did I say? I'm good. All right. Three, two, one. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Are you typing this? And you three, sure? I'm positive. Okay. I'm going to call for some wine right now. Well, I should probably warn you I'll be just fine. That would have just said it all. 
felt the dry. Are you filming? You probably are, liar. You know how you feel that dry, like you have to cough in your eye on water? No, don't do that. If you or someone you know is an extraordinary person and you'd like to end with this. Hey everybody, this is Brittany L from Extraordinariness with Brittany L, where ordinary people do extraordinary things. I wanted to give everyone out there a close little glimpse. What is wrong? No, don't do that. Okay. One of the first people I was blessed to meet was Shay Sharp, who is the founder, president, and creator of Shea Sharp's Pink Wishes. This organization is a breast cancer foundation that that doesn't make sense. Are you videoing right now? I used to be popping. No, don't do that. This is real life as it happens. Turn around like that glass of water was just there. Hi, everybody. We in the country. You got the big old White House behind you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know you are. So wait, you want me to just turn this way and turn around? I'm yeah. like, what else am I supposed to say? Like, okay. Hello, are you there? No, don't do that. For real though. No, don't do that. Okay. That's what you want to do. Because I'm happy. Feel like a room. I feel like this looks good. And Shut up, Godiva. Oh, are we really rolling? See you later.